TOA community, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel, Robert Linkle, trainingtheolderadult.com. Hope you're all doing well. Please do me a favor, hit the subscribe button, like all the videos, help us grow the channel. We're getting there. We've got a big show for you today, Wednesdays with Robert. This is episode 10, and uh, I've got like 40 something slides to show you. So we got a lot to get into, let's dive into it. Number one, first things first, one, well no, not one week from today. Uh, Five days from today, August 28th, TO Apex 2.0 drops, officially opens. TOA Select members, you're already signed up, you're already in there. Anybody else, if you want to do this, we have Apex 1 and 2 for sale right now. You can bundle the deal. You get a pretty big chunk off. I think it's 30, 40% and something like that if you buy both at once, or you can just get Apex. We have program designs, strongman training, all of our medleys, all that introduction. We have all of our weekly protocols and our 55 plus exercise. That's just the exercise library. There's a whole 25 mobilities in there and the entire program of how we build our older adult client programming and how we implement it in-house, how you can do so at home, et cetera. All right, let's take a quick look at this first topic, okay? We are gonna dive into vest training and specifically why aging bodies should wear vests as they go out for daily walks and or in their workouts. So every Tuesday is called Vest Friend Workout, which is a um, majority of our clients will either train Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, or something like that, where their Tuesday workout is a back-to-back -back from their Monday workout. And if they're doing that, if they're back to backing, our second workout is basically a body weight vest workout, which means they're not really moving weights in hand, they're moving their body weight around while utilizing a vest, wearing their vest, okay? So it's what we call their vest friend because their best vest friend is with them the whole time through the workout. And so we put that up every, you know, every other week or so, we'll highlight some exercises from it and people go, well, what's, what's the deal? What are you guys doing? So I wanna look at the research behind this a little bit and talk about how increasing your muscular strength, okay, by getting your muscles stronger, the muscles by lifting weights, resistant bands, kettlebells, dumbbells, barbells, whatever you're using, external load, okay, that demand on the muscles demands on the origin and the insertion of the muscle. Let's take the bicep tendon and the, the bicep. Origination here is off the coracoid process and insertion is at the uh, bicep tendon at the uh, base of the medial aspect of the radius, okay? And anytime the bicep gets contracted concentrically, the insertion and the origin, that gets closer together. And then when you eccentrically stretch it apart, it gets further apart, okay? Now every muscle works like this. And as you are doing your curls and you're starting to struggle, the two ends, the origin and the insertion, they're being stressed. And what are they stressing on? They're stressing on their anchors into the bones. So as you stress the muscle, the origin and the insertion are then stressing on the bone and the bone's like, oh geez, this is a tension we're not used to. So the bone, the osteoblasts and the osteoclasts are in this constant battle between chewing up old bone and creating new bone. And so the osteoclasts are like, man, we've got we've to get to work here and we've got to start building in some new bone because there's this new demand being placed on us every time this guy does curls, the bones feel like they're going to come apart. So we got to put down more bone, right? So you're not only growing, and that's a very broad overview of how that whole thing's happening. There's a much more scientific and, and fancier way to do it. But generally speaking, that's what's happening, okay? So your muscles are getting stronger. The origin and the insertion, the ligaments that are holding those bones, uh, the muscles to the bones, those are getting stronger, but the bones themselves are getting stronger. So really you're working on anti-sarcopenia strength gains, right? Better function. And your anti-osteopenia early onset or softening of bones, all the way down to brittle bones, osteoporosis. Now, if we look at that and say, okay, there's resistance training there for us. What about bone density issues, specifically for women who are three times more likely to achieve or to uh, have bone density issues than men? If we're going to go out and just go for a walk, how much impact is occurring and is that impact beneficial for bone density? Okay. So a lot of these articles kind of look into that. They, this just to basically explain to you what I just said is how, you know, you're going to move weights. It's going to help. Okay. Now, specifically, the National Osteoporosis Foundation found that about 10 million people in the U.S. have um, osteoporosis and that 44 million people have low bone density, which is basically early onset of osteoporosis or osteopenia, okay? 
meaning they're at risk of developing this condition. So uh, let's see, what is that? About 20%, okay, maybe a little bit less, uh, right around in there, okay, 20% or so are gonna have bone density issues. Now, the problem with that is you are at, at risk for um, injury slash fracture, and the older that you get and the more opportunities you have for fractures, the less likely you are to recover from it and the greater risk of you actually dying from this, okay? Now, something as severe as I slip, I fall, I break both of my hips and my lower back, ribs in my side, my elbow, my, my clavicle because I put my arm down, and now, you know, 20% of your body's snapped and smashed and broken because your bones are so brittle. You're Mr. Glass from uh, the uh, Unbreakable movie. The guy trips and falls down a flight of stairs and breaks, you know, 50% of the bones in his body. Like that actually can happen to people or you bump into a piece of furniture and snap your tibia, right? I mean, things like this, you can be so brittle that, that this is a real thing and people will bruise badly just from banging into stuff, okay? I mean, my dad, right before he passed, he had bruises all over him and he's like, I don't even know how I got it. I, it's not like they run into something, they're like, ow, my elbow, and then there's a bruise. He just wakes up the next day and there's a big bruise there from banging into something, okay? So if the skin is that sensitive, the muscles underneath are sensitive, the bone density issues that are underneath it are just as sensitive, okay? So the simplicity of being able to go for a walk, is that gonna have any benefit on impact training? Okay, okay, doctor says I need to exercise to increase my bone density, so I'm gonna start walking. Well, it's important for people with osteoporosis to do things to reduce their bone density. Weight bearing and resistance exercises are the best type of workouts that they can help they can do to help reduce the rate of personal loss of bone mass and improve their bone strength. There is no evidence that walking on its own improves bone mass. No evidence at all. So if you're just going to go out and walk around, that's not going to improve your bone density. And that is now seven minutes in. My point is a lot of people will go, well, I do exercise. So I go for a walk. No evidence to support this. Okay. None. But there is some evidence that walking while wearing a weighted vest or a rucksack or basically weights, okay, even if you're going to do extremity loading, which we'll talk about that here in a second, may be helpful. Okay, so there's some evidence to support that. Still not, I wouldn't say conclusive, but a pretty good amount, right? All right, so options for doing this when you go for a walk. Rucksack would be number one, okay? I have a rucksack. You'll see in any of my pictures, videos, when I'm online, I always wear a ruck. I do not wear a vest when I go out for my walks because number one, our golden rule is if you're going out for more than 60 minutes, you need to spread the weight mass that you're going to carry to your hips, not just on your shoulders and your upper body frame. At about 45 to 60 minutes, things start to get a little uncomfortable, meaning that the weight that you're carrying is now starting to weigh down on your frame and the musculature, your traps, your lats, your, your rhomboids, all this, they're designed to be able to endure so much, but eventually they're going to start to fatigue and you're going to start to round and you're going to start to feel the pressure of that weight sitting on your traps. It can cause headaches, it can cause migraines, it can start to cause forward posture because you're lose, your musculature just can't hang on anymore. It's like, I'm trying to be as good as I can, but at some point I'm gonna hit fatigue and the only thing I can do is just relax onto the frame and just say, can you just hold up, just hold up. And now the bones are the ones responsible for doing it, causing more harm than good. So if you are going to wear a vest, and we're gonna talk about a progression on how to do this, you start out super light and you wear it for like 10 minutes of your walk. You go out five, you come back five, you take it off, you leave it on the doorstep and you go do the rest of your walk. And we baby step five minutes every other week or something like that until you build up to about 35 to 45 minutes, somewhere in there, maybe an hour. And then if you wanna walk further than that, take the vest off or invest in a backpack or a rucksack. Something where you have hip support where the you know 50% of the distributed weight can sit on your hips and the other 50% can then go up on your shoulders, okay? So I'd say 45 to 60 minutes is kind of that line in the sand, wear a rucksack. When I go out, I'm going anywhere between 90 and 120, if not more. I'm out for a while, but again, this is my sport, this is what I do. So I'm going out further in distances than that. So I just don't wear the vest. Where I do wear my vests are in the workouts, and we're gonna talk about that too. I do a vest workout every single week as well. My vest friend workout is usually on Wednesday mornings. Uh, every once in a while it floats around a little bit, okay? All right, so vests are ex very popular examples of uh, resistance training tools. Now, we can do this, right? The other alternatives, they'll talk about ankle and wrist weights. 
That's what we call extremity loading, okay? And there's lots of options for these. You got these little squishy guys, listen. Feel how squishy, you hear how squishy that is, right? They're a little squishy and soft. Those are like two pounds. And then you can get some of these big boys that go around your ankles, right? And these are up to four pounds and the weights are adjustable. You can take them in and out of here. See this guy? You can just slide that out. If you don't want those weights in there, just pop that guy out of there. So you don't, when, if you buy like five pound ankle weights and two and a half pound wrist weights, I'm not expecting you to take an extra 15 pounds with you on day one. You're probably going to hurt yourself if you do that. As with anything else, you need to baby step your way into this and get your body used to it. Okay. There are other ones too. These Vallejo ones. Okay. These are very popular too. These, you know, go around your ankles and such. Here's, here's the benefits and the negatives to extremity loading. If you put an extra one pound or around your wrist and an extra two pounds around your ankles, you've got two, four, six extra pounds on your body. That's going to give you six, 12, 18, 20, right? You're going to get this extra load as you go. That's awesome. The negative to that is, as we talked about with the vest and it's going to start to wear on you, as soon as your arms fatigue and you're no longer able to muscularly engage, your arms are now fatiguing out and they're starting to dangle. Okay. And then eventually they're going to be so tired. You're just going to let them hang. Well, now you've got an extra two pounds just dangling on your wrist, dangling on your elbow, dangling on your shoulders that are not under tension, that are so fatigued now they can't support that extra weight. Now, as great as the extra benefit of having two pounds on you, it's just as much damage if you're not engaging against it while you're doing the walk, okay? So as with anything else, and this is where carrying an empty backpack, maybe with your water and your wallet in it or something like that, right? And I always remind people, bring your wallet, bring $20 in case you need to get a ride or something like that, or you, you walk up to the corner market, it's hot, you wanna get something to drink, bring a little money with you, have some Band-Aids, have a little first aid with you, and then that's about it. You know, maybe a hat and some sunglasses, something like that, but just bring a backpack, okay? Because you could just take off your wrist, put them in your backpack. You're still carrying the load, you're just not carrying it around your wrist anymore. Same with the ankles. Now you say, oh, hey, I'm on my feet the whole time, so obviously they're gonna stay engaged not during the swing process, okay? There's good research to support this. When you muscularly fatigue and you're swinging your leg through, meaning when the other leg's on the ground and you're standing on it and you're swinging your other leg, you'll actually egg beat your straight leg around and relax it. So you kind of do these egg beater steps, okay? We've probably seen typically older individuals who are not very conditioned and they kind of waddle when they walk and they kind of egg beat their straight legs because they don't have the musculature to pick their feet up and walk straight anymore right? They're so deconditioned. That's the only way they can do it. They waddle and kind of swing a leg as they go. You're going to do that same thing when you fatigue, but now you've got an extra two and a half pounds on each leg and same thing, the labrum of your hip, your knee, your ankle, they're all going to try to support that extra load, but they're fatigued. Okay. So if you're going to extremity load, which I don't do very often, every once in a while, I'll put these guys on my wrists for like a mile or two out of my five or six. And then they go in the ruck. They just become extra weight. Okay. Extremity loading should be done really, 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 really light. A half pound to a pound on your hands or wrist, one to two pounds on your ankles. Wear it for a half a mile or a mile, put them in your backpack or just loop back to the house and drop them off and keep going. So baby steps into this. I don't want to hear or see any message. Oh, I hurt my elbow when I went out. You said to go for a five. No, I didn't. Okay. Baby step, baby step, baby step. Everybody put up your right hand promise. Baby steps. Okay, good. Thank you. All right. So you have extremity loading, you can wear a vest, you could wear a rucksack or a backpack. Now there are some where it's just a weighted belt. Okay. I've seen those. I've also seen ones where it's like a reflector vest and it's got little pouches of weight. I'll show you some of those here in a minute and anything like that will be fine. You're just going to have different comforts and different things. It's just preference at that point. Okay. Other things they talk about to increase bone density as we talked about dumbbells, kettlebells, barbells, resistance bands, all that kind of stuff two to three days a week. I've done other videos on this. So if you want more information on how to introduce resistance training into your regular daily life and your protocols, it's, you know, twice a week for two months and then three days a week for two months. And you kind of build up, I've got a whole protocol for that. So go check out those videos. If I remember, I'll put them in my link down below and make sure you can see them. Okay. All right. So we, we touched on those. All right. A couple other efforts here. Where they talk about some of the research is basically just how much skeletal impact are we getting when we're walking? Okay. Let alone with, with load, et cetera, the effects of a weighted vest walk on metabolic responses and ground reaction forces. So basic conclusion of assessing this group of ladies, I believe, uh, there were, anyway, you can see the details up there. 
Using a weighted vest can increase metabolic cost, which means your metabolic efforts are going to be higher. Uh, relative exer exercise intensity, yes. And then load on the skeletal system during walking. So basically just proving that by carrying this extra load, when you walk and impact the ground, is there a reverberation effect back through the frame that is going to cause benefit to bone density? And the answer is yes. Okay. So knowing that, let's go a little deeper. Long-term exercise using weighted vest prevents hip bone loss in post-menopausal women. Post-menopausal, meaning you don't have any testosterone. You don't have any estrogen, right? And now, after all of that, the times when you were probably going to have your best opportunity to bone to grow bone density, you're now past that, but you could have some uh, type of hormonal replacement that's going to assist in this. But we're looking at people who are past their prime in terms of you've got the best shot of rebuilding your bone density, males, females, 30 to 35, that's kind of your best opportunity, right? Beyond that, we're going downhill. So these individuals are past that prime. I'm not saying you're past your prime, you're a superstar. What I'm saying is for bone density, you're past your prime, okay? So individuals there, they found over a five-year program of weighted vest uh, plus jumping exercises. Now, that, that, was, that was another one where people were like, they had these older people jumping. They were doing depth jumps, steps, and like switch steps. So it wasn't really like plyometric box jumps, okay? It wasn't that. It, there were some things that were a little more dynamic, but not much. Basically, they got them to get off the ground a little bit, okay? Um, it had, a, uh, it had a, sig a significant um, bone loss potential to it for postmenopausal women. Furthermore, a particular program appeared to promote long-term adherence and compliance as evidenced by a commitment to exercise for more than five years. Meaning, this is a slow process. It's gonna take a while. Bone density is not grown quickly. If you get somebody that's 30 pounds overweight, deconditioned, they train hard for eight weeks, they could look totally different, right? But as far as bone density goes, you could train hard for an entire year and not look any, well, normally you'll look different, but as far as your bones go, who knows? You could do a scan and everything would be exactly the same. And you're like, I just kicked ass for six months. How is this not any different? It takes a long time. Okay, this is a, it's not an easy process. It takes a long time. So a five-year study showed that there was increase in, in bone mineral density, BMD, right? They showed their, but over five years, it's going to take you all in. They're wearing their vest regularly. They were doing jumping training, jump exercises. Again, not, I don't believe they had the vest on while they were jumping. Uh, nine of the original group engaged in weighted vests plus jumping exercises three times a week. I'm pretty sure they didn't jump with the vest on. They were doing weighted vest training and jumping exercises, okay, very different. It's the impact on the ground and that reverberation, which we can basically, if you don't wanna jump, we can replace that with the bone density of the previous study while walking with the weighted vest on. I'm not a big fan of having older people jump, okay? We'll do little pop squats, drop squats, that kind of thing where you're getting that far off the ground, but I'm not a fan of like plyos, unless you're some type of older adult dynamic athlete, a long jump or something like that, different story, okay? All right, so looking a little further into this research, I know I'm going deep on this, but I want you to understand where this is coming up from. This is from Hyperware, but basically their whole article talking about this found all the, the research articles that I just referenced to you. And I didn't just go here and find them, I did it in reverse. I found all those articles and then I went to Hyperware and I'm like, oh, they were, they were all right here. So as they're going through, there's your uh, long-term exercise use wearing the vest, okay, postmenopausal women, there's that one. Right, the effects on walking and ground reaction force, that's the other one. Th this weight vest research, and then the next one on the lower back takes you into two research uh, articles that I've referenced in previous Ruck articles, and, and we found them in there. Wall Street Journal's got all their stuff blocked unless you subscribe, so I couldn't see the whole thing. But basically introduced and said, yeah, you can improve your posture and your lower back strength if you Ruck via bone density and improved strength, okay? So great benefits to be seen here across the board wearing and utilizing a vest, but you've got to go about this in a very specific way, okay? So let me show you a couple of vests and then we'll talk about uh, practical application and how to put this in there. All right, I am not a fan of these ones in the very top left corner, second one in, where you have the, um, the plate that just gets screwed to your chest, terribly uncomfortable. If you're gonna do, put it on to do like a set of chin-ups or something and then take it off, maybe, I think you just need to invest in a really good vest okay invest in a good vest <laughs> as you go through and there's a ton of them some are plate loaded some are just little uh containers of uh, or little uh, lead 
not lead, little metal strips. I'll give everybody lead poisoning. Little metal strips. Others are sand, little containers of sand. It just depends on, on which one. I took like three different screen grabs of just the, the, the general search for weighted vest and what they're selling. Plates, etc. You can see all the different shapes and sizes, different colors, different schemes, and different comforts for men and women. You know, some that are uh, bigger in um, you know the chest and the shoulders are definitely going to be more comfortable in, in a more pliable uh, vest. Where wearing a plate across your chest, not so not so comfortable if you're trying to get up and down off the floor or if you're doing a bench press. It's really uncomfortable. So just to kind of give you an idea and show you some of these. This is my favorite vest, and yes, it's from Hyperware. Again, I make no financial return from any companies. I'm just telling you about the best ones that I've seen out there. So this is the, the one you see on screen. This is the one we have two of these that we have in-house that our clients will wear. And you can see how pliable it is, right? So it's easy, but also notice there's no weights on the chest area. All the weights are below the chest. And then again, these are real easy to take in and out. It's just a little sand, hear it? It's just a little sand container and you just slide them out the back. So it comes with 10 pounds and if you wanna start and you're like, well, I just wanna do two pounds for my first walk, just take a bunch of them out and you're good to go. You put it on like a little, uh, like, a, like a backpack and then you zip it up and it wraps up and you can cinch up the sides, super comfortable, okay? So that one goes up to 10. Now, if you want one that's a little bit more dynamic and a little heavier, this one goes 20 to 30 and you can see it's the same kind of idea. It's just a little bit bigger, thicker material. And these are little plates, <clears throat> little tiny strips, like finger sized plates that are, I think a quarter pound each, something like that, or maybe, maybe a half somewhere along those lines. And so you can put together that with as much weight as you want. <clears throat> a little more difficult to like change those weights in between. I want to do a ruck today with 10 pounds, but I'm going to do a workout tomorrow with 20. You got to sit there and put each one. There's like a little shoehorn that like pops them in and out. It's that once you have this set, it should basically just stay. But then you have plate loaded ones like this. And this is one you see Keegan wearing all the time. This is her, her vest, <laughs> her favorite saying, nobody cares, work harder, right? We get that right on the cover. So this guy, you on Velcro it and throw it over your head. And it just, it's a little plate loader, holds on the front, one on the back, you're distributed. She has seven and a half pounds on each side. So she has 15 pounds that she carries with her when she does her whole workout. Now, if we're gonna do something where she has to lay down on the floor and do bridges or hip thrusts or uh, bench press. Laying on that plate is terribly uncomfortable. And more than likely, you're going to break the plate too because it does have a curvature to it. They do try to create some curvature to it to make it a little more comfortable for the chest and for your scapulas on the back. But it's still an iron plate, okay? And I love it. They say all over it, this is not armor. So it is not bulletproof, even though it looks pretty badass and very military. So that's when I'll have her wear this one, the fit from Hyperwear. It's $70, between $70 and $85. It depends when they do sales, they have on sales. I am a, a friend of the company. And if you want, again, I don't make this money. This is just a discount they give us, I promise you. Um, it's Hyperwear and you do TOA 15, you get $15 off if you wanna buy one of these. Now we have some in house, like I have a whole bunch of other vests right here in this little, in this little container. That way, when we do do a vest workout, whoever just did it, I can have those cleaned and sprayed down and drying and the next group can put on other vests and we can kind of cycle them through the day. But I basically ask my clients to buy their own vests and have their own at home. That way they can wear them when they go walking and they bring them in and they just leave them in their cars because they're like, we usually drive to where we're gonna go walk and then we come in here and they call them their boyfriends, a lot of our clients. They bring their boyfriends in and they're good to go. So everybody's got their own vest, they put it on, we do our vest friend workout and then they take them home with them, put them back in the car and they'll do two to maybe three walks a week as well. I have another client, Joyce, puts hers on while she's cleaning the house. She's vacuuming, she's cleaning, moving around with you know six pounds in, in the vest on her. Just a little opportunity to get extra load and move about you know a half mile while she's walking around the house doing all our stuff. So check that out. I think this is a great opportunity. And just to kind of drive this home, let's just run through these numbers really quick. Again, I know I'm going deep. So walk in a mile, 5,280 feet. Let's say the average person's taken three feet of a step. Okay, so that's about 1,760 steps that they're gonna take to get 5,280 feet. Now, if you have a 200 pound man taking 1,700 steps, 1,760 in a mile, that's 352,000 pounds that he's going to move of his own body weight with every step. 200, 400, 600, 800, et cetera, for the whole 1,760 steps. 
Now, if you put a 15 pound vest on him, again, we've built up to this, okay? We don't just do it one day. Those 1700 steps increase you 26,000 pounds plus, right? Of pounds moved in the exact same mileage, the exact same bit. So you got an extra 26,000 pounds of pressure put through your body to help increase your bone density. Now you're wearing a vest, so you're gonna feel that through the frame of your scapula, your spine, your hips, all the way down, everything except your arms. That's where eventually adding a pair of twos or one and a halfs on your wrist, you kinda of got everything covered. I don't really think you need to extremity load your ankles or your knees. I do it every once in a while, just for a little challenge, twice a year, maybe, okay? But I'll do these guys a couple times a month, because I like it, or I'll carry my hiking sticks while I go, which are an extra pound, and that's just as efficient. And there's a lot of people, I'll do a different video on this later, but they think that carrying the sticks is like a wimpier, easier way to go. That's not accurate. There's actually more work to be done. It's harder to work, work with those sticks. You can produce a higher VO2 output because you're using more of your body. You fatigue quicker, but it is actually harder, okay? All right, so in, in that, if I do three miles now, I've got 79,000 pounds that I'm going to, to add to the, so great opportunities to increase demand on bone density. Now let's look at a workout. Let's say I'm going to do body weight, sit to stands, inverted rows with rings or TRX, drop step lunges, 15 on each push ups, and then just a good morning, a hinge. Okay. Basically we're covering everything except for deltoids, shoulders. I'm not a big handstand push up guy. So, you know, we'll have to do some, some of that later on. But 90 reps per round times a 200 pound man is about 18,000 pounds that's gonna be moved. Now, if we put that same 15 pound vest on him, we're at 19,350. So you got 1,300 extra pounds that you're moving through that workout. Do that three times, there's 4,000 pounds, okay? I mean, that's, that's a significant amount of load that you're putting through just by putting the vest on, which the most popular quote our clients say is, oh, I forgot I had this on. I swear, that's, we get done and I go, let me take your vest. And they go, oh, oh yeah. And they, they it's because I want to clean them before they go. Every time they go, oh, I forgot I had this on. That's the beauty of this is look, you get 4,000 extra pounds out of this basic workout, right? Think of the workouts that are even harder, even more. So this kind of wraps it all up. I know I took 25 minutes to explain this, but there's great value there, okay? And we'll have people that'll do it. They'll buy a vest and they go, eh, it's just too hard. It's just too much work. It's, it, it's hard on my frame. It's too heavy and you're going too far. Lighten it up and literally put two extra pounds in there because that's two, four, six, eight, 10, 12 for 1700 step, whatever it is, right? I mean, that's an extra 2,800 pounds or whatever. It doesn't, my, my point is, is there's extra work to be had and you can build up slowly. You don't have to wear the full 10 pound vest and do a five mile walk on your very first time, okay? All right, so I think we hammered this home. Comments, questions about that, hit me up down below. I wanna keep moving, okay. Another client of mine asked me about this. They said, what do you think about this therapy device for shoulder issues? This little routine here, this guy, I've seen it many, many times, did some research on it. It's designed specifically for a supraspinatus tear and or shoulder instability of the rotator cuff. Pretty cool little outline. Um, Shoulderreliever.com is a website if you want to go check it out. I don't have any experience with it. I have mocked something like this, mocked meaning created my own little version just to see what it feels like and it's work, okay? So ideally you start with a light ball and you do, I think they said 10 days of five minutes of drills daily. You can just kind of put it into a primer or you're into your warm up. and there's four different positions. I'll show you all those here in a second. There's position one out in front, two, you're out at 45, three, you're out at 90, oops, three, you're out at 90, and then four, you're in a hinge position with a hand against the wall go in there and you do like 30 clockwise, 30 counterclockwise and go to the next position. So it's about five minutes worth of work, okay? And this guy in the medical jacket is very convincing as he goes through this, talking about it. I wanna know from any of you, have you tried anything like this or tried it? Give me some feedback, please, because I would love to know. But the research that they found on it looks pretty sound. Um, there were a ton of reviews that people said that it worked really well. Some high level athletes, bodybuilders, football players, et cetera, that said it worked really well for them. And it's something that I have this, I have a Buford complex tear of my labrum and supraspinatus tear in my shoulder. And I'm looking for something that would assist this. I have other clients that have similar issues. So I would love to see if this would help. Now, another component to it is pressure on the rotator cuff when sleeping, your shoulder can sink and move about and it can ache and hurt. So this is a little device they created that hooks onto your knee and around your wrist and it's pliable, it moves a little, but basically it keeps your arm tucked down at your side. Now, 
I don't know about that. Like, I don't know about actually sleeping like this with my arm pinned to my side, but if the pain gets bad enough, I already hug pillows and have all this other stuff to help with my back and my hips. So anyhow, if any of you have information on this, please help me out. Let me know if you've experienced it, tried it. It's 150 to $200 to invest in it. So I don't know about that, but I'd love to be able to have something that, that would help out. So you let me know. Okay. And give me, give me a, give me a, a little bit of help there. I'd much appreciate it. Okay. New implements that we purchased in house power block power block has been around a long time. I don't know their whole story, but I know they went through some type of change at some point, either in design or ownership or what. The original power blocks, great idea, terrible design, and now it's a great idea with a really good design. These are the power block kettlebells. Again, I don't make any money from them. I'm telling you all about good equipment to invest in because I've got a shed full of garbage out there of stuff that I have bought and it's junk. And I'm not gonna throw other companies under the bus. I'm only gonna highlight the ones that do good stuff. Power block has created a pretty badass product. That kettlebell in the front goes from eight kilos to 10 to 12 to 16, I believe. It goes 22 pounds, it's right, I don't have it, it's over there. 22 pounds, 18 pounds, 22 pounds, 26 pounds, 35 pounds. So you have four kettlebells built into one. They're laser cut, they're magnetized, and it's really, really comfortable to use. A little wider than a regular kettlebell, you can get your fingers in there, etc. I love it. The other one, empty, is 16, goes to 20, 24, 28. So you've got uh, 35 pounds all the way up to 63 pounds built into one kettlebell. So between those two, you now have eight kettlebells, right, utilized. And think of space, look at my the rack up there. I can get rid of all of those and basically put two up there. The only negative to that is if you're training multiple people, you need multiple implements. So that's where it's, if you're a one-on-one -on -one studio or maybe one on two and that's about it, you can get one or two of each of these and you're golden, okay? Now I have on the floor over here, which I can't stand things being stacked up on the floor. I know I got stuff over here. It's, it just clutters up the room. We're trying our best to kind of get things elevated. I've got all these little dumbbells, two and a half, five, seven and a half, twelves, et cetera. I was able to get rid of all of them, plus add two additional loads I didn't have before, all in this one little set of these powder blue power block. They go three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24. You get all eight weights built into one. I used them for my entire workout this morning. I tried to break them. I tried to get them to fall apart. I was shaking them, moving them, tilting them side to side. They're solid. They're really good. Okay, so $200 for the dumbbells, $160 for the small kettlebell, $240 somewhere around there for the big one. Don't quote me. But basically, you're looking at two, four, six, seven hundred dollars $700, probably $800 bucks with shipping, somewhere around in there to get all of what you see right there. But that's a pretty damn good, I mean, if you're spending $60 a month on a gym membership, you know, to go up and use weights, this and that, I mean, in a year, this is already, anyway, you guys get it. Just wanted to show you these. I wanted to show you how they, how they move and how they work on here too. Um, if you haven't seen power block there, there again, there are these little laser cut. We got a second pair that I got for a client, Kathleen, and we got free shipping because we ordered two implements, which if you've paid for anything heavy to be shipped, it's super expensive. So there's the whole thing, 24 pounds, okay? And then when you go to change the load, it's just got this little guy that slips out and the little color chart on the top tells you what each weight is. So if you go to purple, that's now down to 21 pounds and three pounds drop off. And then I can do my curls or do whatever I'm doing. And I'm like, oh man, I wanna do shoulder raises, right? And I'll pull that and I'll go to a lighter weight. I just want six pounds, cool, there I can do my shoulder raises now. And, and, and it's, not a true center mass, right? Where it's all the way around your hand, but there's more weight distributed around the outside. So it's closer to a center mass bell than it is an actual dumbbell, but still there's much greater benefit in these guys down here where the weight's all the way around your wrist. My point is though, pretty durable, really comfortable. I, I just want to share it with you and let you know it's a pretty solid product, okay? All right, 33 slides later. We got through all this. I hope you enjoyed today. If you or your clients or anybody you know has bone density issues, they're, they're thinking about, you know, how can I do this? I'm thinking about taking these medications. Number one, I won't say the medications names out there, but there are three big name medications out there. Read that fine print. It's not doing what you think, okay? It's not doing what you think. And in many cases, it's making you worse than it is. I don't wanna to talk too much about it. Please do your research and do anything and everything you can first before going on that medication, including 
spending $80, buying a vest and start walking with it every day with two and then two weeks later, four and then two weeks later, six pounds and going cool. I'm getting an extra six pounds of pressure back through all my bones, et cetera, with every single step that I take, adding thousands of pounds to my regular walk that I'm already doing. And then I'm gonna add a one and a half to two pound weight to go around my arms and I'm gonna muscularly hold those while I walk. I used to make fun of these people when they walked around the neighborhood doing their little high step, holding their weights. And, and ha ha, jokes on me, they were increasing their bone density when I wasn't, okay? So you can get great benefits from all your lifting in the weight room, but if you're a walker, we may as well do this. If you don't wanna lift five days a week, you wanna lift one or two, which is fine. I'd prefer it to be three, okay? But if you wanna do one or two, that's okay. And then if you're gonna get out and walk on a regular basis daily, do this. Why not do it? Invest in this because the research supports it. The anecdotal support uh, is there. All of our clients that are doing this, I think I've bought realistically like six clients vest. And, and what we do is we buy it for them. If they don't wanna use it anymore, I'll buy it back, okay? Like I'll, I'll take it back from them. And, and, and then I can sell it to somebody else or give it to someone else and let them use it. And we've done that a couple of times, okay? The point is, is we want people to be able to utilize these and get the benefit from it. And so I'm gonna say 60% of my clients have a vest of their own and are out there doing rocks, doing walks. They're out there doing their thing. Let me show you, here's, here's Bob and Elizabeth. Just from this weekend, okay, I saved this picture. I knew, knew I saved this on purpose. Here's Bob and Elizabeth, okay, wearing their vest. Elizabeth has, oh, they both have the, the elite, okay? They're out there on a four mile rock just walking around doing their thing, okay? 15 to 16 minutes per mile, that's right at an hour, that was perfect. Bob said I was starting to feel one of my traps towards the end. It's exactly what we want. If you're gonna do anything more than that, put on a backpack, okay? Comments, questions, hit me up down below. Much love and appreciation to all of you. Thank you for being on here 36 minutes. I think this is our biggest episode, but I had a lot to say. I hope you enjoyed it. Comments down below, let me know, and if not, continue to fight your good fight against sarcopenia, and we will see you in the next one. Peace.